Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. So Ash is from Productive Insights and today he's going to present to us your nine step business growth framework. So this presentation teaches you how to grow your business using the Productive Insights proven nine step business growth framework. After a 15 year corporate career in finance and strategy, a CPA and an MBA from the AGSM distinction, Ash founded Productive Insights in 2013. Ash hosts a successful podcast called Productive Insights Podcast with over 215 episodes. It features some of the world's leading online entrepreneurs, including Seth Godin, episode 200, just in case you want to go straight there, and many others. And you can access it at productiveinsights.com forward slash podcast. He also leads a close-knit international community of heart-centered business owners who work on increasing their profit per hour. All right, Ash, we will hand over to you now. What I wanted to talk about today is this nine-step framework, but I don't want to waste your time, and I do want this to be exciting, as Sash was said. So can I just get a little bit of a show of hands? I'm just going to stop sharing screen for a second so I can see everybody here. Um, just a show of hands to see uh, how many people here have a business that is currently bringing in a full-time income. Okay. And can I, uh, how many people here are clear about who their ideal customer is and what problem they solve for them? Okay, that's great. Good number of people, all right. And out of the two, out of these two challenges, which would you say is your biggest challenge right now? Again, show of hands. Your biggest challenge is getting more clients or your biggest challenge is scaling your business. You've got to pick one. So, sorry, I, <laughs> I'll start again. Your biggest challenge is getting more clients, show of hands. Okay. And scaling your business. Okay. So, we've got a little bit more on the client acquisition side. All right. So I think I'm going to try and focus the presentation a little bit more on that. And with your permission, because we have only about 10 minutes, I'm going to skim through uh, some of the stuff that is less relevant to you. Uh, I'm just going to swap displays again. And now, uh, just can you confirm again, Sasha, that you can only see audience poll on the screen? Yes, that's correct. Just the one slide. Right. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm Ash Roy. I'm the founder of ProductiveInsights.com. As Sashua said, I suffered through a CPA. No offense to the accountants in the room. I hated it. And then I came to my senses and I tried to redeem myself by doing an MBA at the Australian Graduate School of Management, where I learned how to grow a personality. Um, the outcomes for today's presentation are to understand how to apply the nine-step profitable framework, not up the front framework, but okay. Um, and um, we've just gone through the audience poll, so we don't need to go through that again. Um, just a couple of quick uh, caveats, if you like. Business growth is challenging. It's not unicorns and rainbows. It requires consistency and focus, and it takes time. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the nine steps to the business growth framework, but I'm going to try and focus a little bit more on the lead generation aspects, because that seems to be more of a challenge in this group. Sasha, can you give me a heads up when I'm through the five minute mark? Where am I at at the moment? Let's just call it that you're at the three minute mark. Okay, cool. All right, so the first step is to get very clear on your mission and your message. What change are you trying to make in the world? Who are you trying to help and how are you trying to help them? One thing that I found useful is to try and focus on the change and being generous and leading with empathy rather than focusing on making money. Making the money is kind of like a byproduct and it does happen, it does take time, but you need to focus on the process of delivering value, figuring out what change you wanna make and who you wanna make it for. 
Once you've clarified your ideal message, you want to spend quite a bit of time in researching your ideal customer. This is an iterative process. And in fact, all the nine steps I'm going to share with you are iterative and they feed off each other. So while I'm presenting them in a linear format, it's actually one, you, you might do a little bit of research on your mission, for example, you might say, okay, this is my ideal customer. But then after you serve a few of the customers, you go, actually, you know, I don't like working with these people. So I'm going to go back and change my mission and I'm going to change who my ideal customers and so on. So the next step is get clear on your ideal customer. Then you want to state your customer's problem, ideally in words that they would use to describe their problem rather than you would use to describe it. And this is useful for creating content that is search engine optimized and that meets your customer where they are on their journey. You then want to try and craft an offer that is a solution to your customer's problem that solves their problem where they are on their journey. Now, the offer is different to your product or your, the widget or whatever it is that you sell because your offer includes the copywriting or the presentation of the offer. That's a very important piece. And I think copywriting is one of the most valuable and critical skills we need to learn as business owners, even if we do outsource a lot of it. Um, so getting good clear on your copywriting is a great way to get clearer on your, get better at making offers. Um, and another little suggestion, about 80% of copywriting, in my opinion, is market research. Stringing together beautiful sentences is great, but if you're stringing together the wrong beautiful sentence, you might as well not bother. So research is very important. Once you've done all that, you've crafted an offer, you want to facilitate 10 or 20 purchases. Now, I use the word facilitation of purchases as opposed to making a sale. The idea of making a sale has this very coercive undertone to it. And I think it used to work back in the day when the customer had less um, had less leverage in the process. The product discovery, feature discovery was in the hands of the seller. When you wanted to buy a product, you had to physically walk into a store. Google didn't exist. But Google's kind of turned the tables a bit. And now if you want to buy a pair of shoes, you go online, you do all your research. And by the time you're ready to buy the pair of shoes, you're pretty much at the checkout page. So the way that we can participate in the sales process as sellers is by offering valuable information and content that helps customers move through the buyer's journey. And that process can be done either in person through face-to-face -face conversations, but also through your, what people would call the sales funnel. I don't like using the word funnel because it's, it's associated with a lot of spammy, you know, clobber people over the head with offers until they either succumb or hate you forever. But I prefer to use the term um, buyer's journey and you kind of, you know, guide people through the buyer's journey. You step into the role of the trusted advisor through your content. You then get an understanding of the key metrics. Now we're moving into the scaling phase. So I'm not going to spend too much time on focusing on this, but getting clear on your profit per hour is one of the most important things because ultimately you need to understand what your time is worth to your business and you want that number to keep rising. I see that as a lifestyle metric and that's what we help people do in the Productive Insights Membership Program. Once you've done, you've understood your key metrics, you've understand what your key leverage points are, what's your cost per customer acquisition, what's your cost per lead, um, how do you automate parts of your funnel so you reduce your cost per customer acquisition and your cost per lead after taking into account the time you're spending in acquiring those customers, uh, which is where your profit per hour figure comes in. Sorry if I'm getting too technical on you, uh, but you build an automated sales funnel around that. Then you, you, you can do this massive authority building at any stage in the process, but I recommend doing it later in the process because a lot of it can be outsourced and you want to try and increase your profit per hour so that you can then become a high level contributor in your business. And then you can outsource better quality, you outsource a lot of the content creation and amplification stuff to people who are highly skilled and you can afford to pay top dollar too. And then you refine and iterate the process um, from steps one to eight. So with that, I will end the 
presentation for now. And I want to throw it open to questions, assuming we have the time to do that. And then I have some very, I have a couple of very compelling offers for people who are willing to take me up on the offer, which I will share with you in a second. Perfect. Sounds great, Ash. All right. So who has a question for Ash? He's just given us this amazing overview of how to scale our business very eloquently. So um, what, uh, what questions do people have for Ash? Let's just see if we've got, you can use your raised hand function or I can't see everybody. So maybe just unmute yourself and, uh, and start talking. Let's see if we've got any questions there. I think there's still space for generalists, Ash, rather than specialists and I know you can take the general people if you go the specific niche as well. So your question is, is there uh, room for generalists? Yes. You, you mean you don't need to specialize in a very small specific area, right? Yes. Um, I, I, I've been talking to Seth Godin a lot about this over the last few months, but I think generally, <laughs> generally, <laughs> it's a good place to start is in a specialist area, because what you want to try and do is get a foothold in the market. And then it's almost like you, you start with a smaller niche and then you niche up rather than niche down, if that makes any sense. Mm. So you might say- with Naturopaths oh, and then go to more allied health, go, go to chiropractors and other allied exactly. health building on the- Exactly. So the way it would work is, you know, HubSpot, I'm a solutions partner with HubSpot. They talk about this thing called the flywheel. And the idea is you deliver outstanding experiences to your existing small customer base. You deliver it in a way that is very profitable so that you can then bring, put some more money into advertising and you can gradually expand your reach. But if you try by starting by saying, I'm, I'm helping all business owners, naturopaths or not, then your message won't resonate with anyone and unless you've got money like coca-cola does you would struggle to make a dent in the market and even they probably wouldn't would be ill-advised going for the broader market these days great question scott thank you That's right. great. Mm. okay anyone else have a question for ash we've got time for one more you talk about um, copywriting and testing it. Are you talking about sort of A-B testing or what, what are the best ways to sort of test for the ideal copywriting? Excellent theme? question. So um, copywriting is, copywriting and testing in my opinion are extremely closely, they're, they're two sides of the same coin really. Um, what we think is great copy may not resonate with the audience. So it's an iterative process to, to answer that briefly. You know, you might try using the word this. This is this is used very commonly. Copywriters seem to think that's a very great conversion term. Or, you know, you're not alone is another one that apparently gets a lot of clicks and a lot of interest. But it may not resonate with the audience. So the idea is A-B test, yes. And when you test... Uh, the two clues, two suggestions I have are, firstly, only change one, one variable at a time so you can get better at attribution and you can say, okay, this thing made this much impact. So now I know how much, what to attribute this particular result to. And the second thing I would say is if you want to develop faster in terms of your testing, form a hypothesis before you do the test. So you might say, I'm going to change this word from this to that, for example, on this on my landing page, and I believe it's going to increase conversions, or I believe it's going to decrease conversions. And having that posture forces you to get more involved in the process and deepens the learning process. It's kind of like before you read a book, you ask yourself, what have I studied? What do I know about this topic? And what, what are my opinions about it? And then when you read the book, you form deeper opinions and deeper learnings. Does that help? Yeah, that's really good. Thanks, Ash. Welcome.